Hey everybody, Jamie here, Enigmatic Nomadics, and as you can see, I'm in my bus after nightfall. Got my lights going here, and I'm working on a little project for you, which is editing a follow-up video I did on women's safety, where I interviewed Tamara, Cami, and Tisha. It was a three-part series I did two years ago. I was able to catch up with them and sit them down and and ask them what all has changed and what uh, stories they might have to share from the very first interview we did and let's go ahead and take a look at that right now all right so look hey everybody jamie here from enigmatic pneumatics channel and you might recognize <laughs> the ladies that i'm with here this morning Tamara, who if you've been watching the channel we built her out a bus that we're in right now to do a follow-up interview on uh what's uh, changed and how things have been uh, since our last interview a year ago. Next to her is Cami, and next to Cami is Tisha. We, uh, Tisha has been on the channel from uh, in various capacities and uh, just had a solar install done on her van that we put up on the channel. We did the solar install a year ago at the van build, which is where we are now. <laughs> With that, Let's catch up and see how things have changed in the last year, starting with, we've got them sitting in the same order as last year, starting with Tamara. Tamara, <laughs> nothing's changed since last yeah, year, no. has it? Yeah, no, it's exactly the same in every possible way. <laughs> when we met, you were in a Kia Rio. Yeah, compact car. Yeah, and we did that video um, at the build out of a tour of my car, and um, you know, people were like, whoa, a lot of people were like, hey, she's doing it, way to go, way to make it happen with what you got, but some people were like, she's obviously on meth, she's bipolar. <laughs> so I thought it was so interesting that like, wow. in a community where people view us all that way, and we're like, that's crazy that they think that way, people who live in vans, that van dwellers, and again, a minority, <laughs> that van dwellers were finding someone to look down on and be like, that's the wrong way. Wow. But, um, but regardless, like, I was perfectly happy in my car, you know, but I was done. Like, I was, I, that was a great introduction, you know, to, um, it was a way I could do it at that time. It was a way I could get on the road at that time. I couldn't have jumped to something like this, you know, and I had the goal to have a home I could stand up in by the end of 2017 and I would have accomplished it, but it would have been something with a rusty floor and a mattress, you know what I mean? Like, right. and that's what, and then I was going to go from there, but this is just, I've skipped several steps. This has been an exponential jump in terms of standard of living. And because I was happy in my life already, I just feel like when you've got that state of mind, like every additional thing is just like, so like you just have so much gratitude, you know, and you, you're able to enjoy things so much when you're already at a base place of happy, like everything is just like, does that make sense what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> if you're watching this channel for the first time and all of us are new to you, there's a button right here that you see that you can click on to see the final reveal of Tamara's bus build. And we're gonna to talk to Tamara a lot more here in just a moment. Cammie, how, how have things changed in the last year? You're still in the same vehicle. <laughs> yeah, right. mostly the same. I just got 207,000 miles on my van and it's going strong. I'm trying to get those oil changes on time. Um, yeah, I let's see, I spent some time down in Baja this winter. I highly recommend it. Um, for people who worry, I felt completely safe the entire time. I never had a moment of worry. Um, my van got stuck and some locals came from, just descended upon it to pull it out. And when I tried to offer them some money, they were insulted, which I probably should have known not to do that. But yeah, fish tacos, <laughs> oh, God. so good. I didn't get to surf as much as I wanted, but it was it was pretty good. So yeah, I don't, mostly things are the same for me. <laughs> You've just been out enjoying life. Yeah, I love, van life I still have no desire to well okay there's one I'm starting to feel kind of like my life is a little bit frivolous and not really <laughs> hedonistic because I mean I don't know but um I would like to contribute more meaningfully to a community and maybe have more of a sense of community and and bonds with people which being here at this Van build and is. not enough community for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty good. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, just seeing people walk by, you know, two days in a row and being able to say hi and I know their names and everything is is really a great feeling. Um, so 
I'm trying to kind of think of ways and it's mostly just that feeling of wanting to contribute mm -hmm. instead of just living. I feel like I, with van life, when I'm always moving around and just on to the next awesome place and, or visiting people is really cool. But yeah, so I'm trying to figure out that balance of contributing and trying to build something solid that, that helps other people and continuing my nomadic lifestyle. And I'm not totally sure how that's going to look. But I think that's a thing that a lot of van dwellers, dwellers run into. Mm -hmm. And probably part of the reason that you built your channel and, and mm -hmm. did this. And we all need something where we feel like we're a contributing thing to the greater yeah. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm most excited about life when I don't know what's over the horizon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're just taking it as it comes and yeah. <laughs> adjusting accordingly. Hey. Tisha, when we first met you, you had basically just bought your van. Yeah. It didn't have solar <laughs> on it yet. You had only been in it for what, a couple of months? No, I I had, uh, I got out of my apartment on October 31st and I was down here at the van build on November 1st. I didn't know that, I didn't know that either. Yeah. This I marks mean, a year that you've been yeah. in your van then. Ow. So it's been Happy a year. Happy anniversary. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I stole that from Gia. But no, I, I mean, I'd done the Honda Civic thing before, you know, mm -hmm. so living in a smaller vehicle is much different than living in a bigger vehicle, I've learned. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I had this notion of, well, nobody's going to notice me because I'm going to be stealth camping, and you got to stealth camp a little bit different in a van than mm -hmm. you do in a small vehicle. You probably and know. And a little Tara, bit different in like, the bus than you yeah, do. Yeah. If the bus is even, that's just like, I'm out here. There's yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't I hide. live here, yeah. you guys. <laughs> well, I was in Idaho for a little while, In I'm in Utah now, just kind of traveling. I like to explore a bit, mostly I'm I'm pretty quiet, I'm a very introverted person, so I like to go to parks and just uh, stare at people. Oh Which my gosh, I'm a creeper too! <laughs> <laughs> the majority of my time is actually in an urban environment, I'm usually in a city or a town, and I just try to stay out of the way and stay quiet and that keeps me safe, but uh, I, I like it. I like what, what is it that attracts you to the to the urban environment for those that might be watching thinking I don't know if I want to camp out in in the wilderness or be a <laughs> stealth camper in urban environments uh, walk us through your preferences and and a little bit about why the they are your preferences I really like to bathe every day and <laughs> uh, that's so much more difficult in the desert there or in is. the in the back uh, back country in the mountains i do like going up to the mountains um and i'll spend two weeks there every once in a while but i need trees yeah. and yeah mostly the bathing every day can i add something to that and sure. water so i thought i was going to have to go back to taiwan to keep my permanent residency um mm -hmm. you have to spend six months of every year there but i had applied for a two-year leave so i was in america for two and a half years and I thought, I'm just gonna try to apply for another two year leave. I didn't think they'd grant it, they totally did. So now I'm in America for two more years and I love Taiwan, so that's nothing against Taiwan, but it's really nice being in my home country. Um, and because I have two more years, I joined Planet Fitness. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. <laughs> wanna talk about an upgrade? It's been fantastic. So we love you, Planet and Fitness. And she gets a guest, so. I get a, yeah, <laughs> Tam, Tam gets that a lot. I don't think I've taken anyone else yet, <laughs> but man, I mean, it's, so I make myself work out for 20 minutes at least every time I go shower, because otherwise I just go shower, but they got like massage chairs and like Infrared. this other thing that like jiggles you. <laughs> yeah, the massage chairs are super, super motivating. Nice. Are you still with Planet Fitness, Tisha? Yeah, okay, there's good. no way. I, I mean, I have to have some kind of shower, and if I, as as I'm traveling so much, because I move with the weather, you, you can't get a full membership at one area that's you know planet fitness is really the best because it's cheap and and it's everywhere everywhere so based on us all sitting here now at the van build still in vehicles yes the ladies have <laughs> continued to live the traveling lifestyle <laughs> so apparently it's working for them Tamara, have you learned anything in the last year about the traveling lifestyle that you'd like to share with folks that might be watching oh yeah i'm sure a thousand things uh what have i learned cammy um <laughs> 
about the <laughs> traveling like, lifestyle. Well, so. before when we met you, you lived in a car, you spent a lot of time maybe couch surfing, and um, your options were relegated to what you could do in a car and with friends. You know, I spent more time, I think, <clears throat> sleeping uh, in the wilderness than couch surfing. Okay. And it wasn't so much couch surfing as just like being with my people. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, so it's interesting, and actually I kind of did, because this is uh, just over two years for me of my nomad life, and I kind of did on my social media kind of like an update, like I only earned this much money this year, I only worked this much time, and I only spent this much money. And I had, I don't know why I keep bringing up the critics, but I had someone comment like, well, that's kind of a misrepresentation because you've also uh, taken advantage of people who are um, in debt for their mortgage and, uh, you know, things like How that. Are you taking people? advantage if they, if they welcome you with open arms? Because right. I've seen the way they people are. who know Tamara welcome her. They're <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. please, come in. Well, you know, and she adds something to their it's, yeah. the, it's the visiting you know. that we would all do if we had the freedom. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But so, but my response was, um, I, um, I, I, sorry. Let me think. I just lost my train of thought. Sorry. So no, it's okay. Um, but my <laughs> response was that. Um, the vast majority of the time I do actually meet my own needs in terms of seeking out a shower, seeking out laundry. And if those things weren't offered, I would like, they're all, I, I know how to take care of them for myself. And I usually do basically. Let's so. talk about that for a second. I know that I owned a home and had a mortgage mm -hmm. and I don't ha have a lot of friends that own homes and have mortgages. I have not met one single person, including myself that didn't set their home up in such a way to be welcoming to company. Right. If you have a home, you're proud you have a home. Yeah. That's why you get the nicer dishes. That's yeah. why you get the nicer <laughs> tablecloth, the, the nicer towels. <laughs> you don't do yeah. it so you can keep everybody out and say, this right. is mine. You right. do it because you want to share it. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. you're uh, you're giving people the ability to share what they're right. paying for. Yeah. And but I didn't short rely visits are great. or depend on it. Mm -hmm. I was just blessed occasionally, you know, that, that people were welcoming and stuff. Because yeah. it is yeah. nice it, when you live in a car to have someone say, I have an extra bed. I don't need it. But I'm like, that's awesome, you know. So um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that answers the question you were asking um there's obviously been um a trans uh, transition you know from a car to this which is the most stealthy uh, vehicle mm -hmm. to live in to probably the, one of the very least stealthy vehicles wouldn't you yeah. say <laughs> to live in and um so i've had more interactions with the cops um mostly in california uh it seems like uh californians are a little more uptight um utah cops are great Salt Lake cops. I've I had Salt really Lake. nice They're cops. They're so nice. Too. It's case by case. Idaho cops yeah. are frightening, though. Yeah. But what I find <laughs> is that um, nice. as soon as they interact with me, because the thing is, and I think I might have said this before, but the fact is, there's a few different kinds of people who live in their vehicle, and some of them are on meth. Yeah. Some of them yes. are riots and, and some of them are and... throwing their trash. If you yeah. are in a Walmart parking lot and you're throwing your trash out the window, they are kind Screwing enough to let over. us stay you're there. We are guests. Please yeah. stop yes. doing that. I've seen like two or three people do it and I'm I'm done. Like I, I talk to them. I'm like, dude, they don't or have to let us stay here. Yeah. If you leave your yeah. pee bottles in the parking lot, you're Ew. gonna get a very pissed off video from <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm glad to see that nothing's changed since the last interview. I ask a question and it and turns it into pee bottles in one more parking lot. I don't know how we got there, but your life has changed because, or somewhat because of the bus. Yeah. Any other ways you think your life has changed in the last year that you would just like to update people that might oh, be watching? Oh, I have a show coming out. Is that what you were getting at? I'm just asking questions. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, I was on a show in the spring on Fox called Kicking and Screaming, a survival themed show. It was entertaining, but it was really cute. good. I liked it. Was it. Cute. it was yeah. silly, um, but it was fun. But um, but I have a show coming up that I can that I'm a little bit more proud of and can take a little bit more seriously. It's going to be on Discovery Channel, and it's going to air November fifteenth. And I'm in the third episode, I think. I went like this, but I meant like this. And it's called Bushcraft Build Off. And so oh, filming that was ooh. so fun. Filmed oh, it in Colville, Utah. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, and it's going to be a really cool show. Uh, so people should watch that. Also, I went to Europe and because my parents live in Naples. My sister lives in Barcelona. And then I also did several weeks of just uh, backpacking and hitchhiking and sleeping on beaches and hiking and hiking and hiking and hostels and just going on the super cheap. Got less than 500 round trip. And then... Um, and then hit Europe real cheap, like real cheap, eating street food, you know. So people who want to go to Europe and feel like they can't do it because of budget, like you can if you're not scared. So you've I been in Europe since yeah. we saw yeah. you last. Yeah, filmed a show and then working for California Survival School still uh, with Cami, and, <laughs> um, and then also working as a backcountry guide in Southern Utah still in uh, wilderness therapy, helping adolescents and young adults in crisis. 
And um, what other changes? I can't think of anything I, else. I know, yeah. Okay, Cammy, I know that you had some very interesting stories about when your vehicle broke down and a couple of older gentlemen helped you, took them back right. to their saloon or something, and you hung out with them. Any interesting <laughs> stories since last year? Um, I, oh gosh, now I'm on the spot. Um, life is just awesome. I don't know. Yeah, like things like that happen. Something she was saying about traveling in Europe really cheap. Um, I, also, I did that maybe 10 years ago when I was younger, but I traveled for several oh, weeks on like 75 euro. Sorry, I'm taking it off topic again. <laughs> and you don't have to have a lot of money to do anything. And off that story, when you don't have a lot of money, you have to have like more interactions with people mm -hmm. and you create these really cool stories. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, I don't know, like nothing really, like no specific story, but I've, I've kind of like made friends with these people who have an Airbnb in my favorite town in California and they're letting me use like their hot water and stuff to put in my rinse kit, which like pressurizes from the house pressure of the water thing. And I don't know, just like slowly but surely you kind of build up these relationships and these friendships. And of course I pay them for that. I'm not just trying to like freeload off people, you know, but I can use their fridge and that kind of gives me a little community there. So yeah, just slowly as things build up, when you start a new lifestyle like this, it'll be hard for a little while or you'll kind of feel at loose ends but as things go on and you start to like make friends and and kind of learn about things things will open up and you'll get more opportunities and so yeah life is just great i yeah. like the first two weeks are brutal and then after that everything's good <laughs> i don't even say i always tell myself whenever i'm going to do something new because i've lived in a lot of foreign countries well not a lot but i've lived in foreign countries and and just done a lot of crazy things in my life, I always tell myself, you're gonna hate it for six months, mm -hmm. which isn't usually true. Mm -hmm. But then if things go, it get bumpy, which they will when you're doing something new, you're like, oh, this it's supposed to be mm -hmm. like this for a little while. Um, so yeah, just sit, tell yourself, I'm gonna hate it for six months. And then when you hate it only for a month and a half, you're like ahead of the game. So, I didn't even yeah. hate it. I know yeah, that we put yeah. a, your, your dad <laughs> built you a stainless steel like bathtub in your mm -hmm. van, but it didn't have a drain, and so we put the drain in yes. at the van build. So now you yeah. have an accessible. Did you keep it? Do you How like the you bathtub? Huh? How often do you use it? Is it when I'm surfing a lot? I use it every day. So again, at that Airbnb, I have the rinse kit, and I'll give them a little shout out because I a part of it broke, and they had such good service. They sent me like a whole new, you know, that part and everything. Um, so yeah, rinse kit is really cool. So I take rinse kit is kind of like this little water tank and you can use this little bib adapter thing and, and connect it to like house water of somebody's water. So this Airbnb gives me this super hot water. It goes in the rinse kit and then it stays hot for several hours cause it's uh, insulated. And so I can go out and surf and then I come back to my van and I've got a hot shower, oh, which in central California, like my hands don't work when I get out of the water, like it's that cold. So having that hot water really helps, but it's really funny because every time I shower, so I plug up the drain and I use only organic soaps and everything. So it's really not bad for the environment, but I'll unplug the drain maybe like while I'm driving. So the water will kind of come out. So I'm trying not to have, like be rude and have like a puddle underneath me. Although people rinse in surf parking lots all the time. That's funny. But, um, but yeah, when I'm in there, it kind of steams so up the windows. Next year, man, what is that? There's like leaking or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But w so it's not leaking when I'm showering. But when I like when I'm showering, it steams up the windows, and I've totally heard people walking by going, "Oh, what's going on in there?" I'm showering, guys. Like <laughs> nothing else is going on. And if you do see my van rocking, I'm probably just exercising. Like, I try, well, I try I, to do. It seems like you have a guilty conscience. You're like backing yourself up for fog. You're backing yeah. yourself up for rocking. Just people think they know, and I'm like, no. Like, so yeah, like the steamy windows is a shower. We know. What are you trying to say? <laughs> we know. But, but yeah, no. And then I try to do like 20 minutes at least of high intensity interval training in the morning. And sometimes like I don't want to step out of my bed. So I'm like in there, you know, working mm -hmm. out. And I've heard people be like, Whoa. it's awkward. <laughs> morning interval training. <laughs> Teach you have the space for it. Yeah. How have how things <laughs> changed since we uh, last interviewed you here at the Van Build? Tell us, um, catch us up on what's happened since then. What would you like to share? 
Well, I traveled with Jamie and Larry for a while, and that was a lot of fun. We did a lot of things. I um, I like it kind of slower, though. You know, I'm not much of the move someplace new every two weeks kind of person. And so I've been taking it slow since then and just enjoying life and trying to save some money because I'd like to buy a plot of land and start a little homestead. Mm. And then uh, maybe... <laughs> uh, be delicious to flies. Um, <laughs> no, and then maybe have a section of that plot of land where I can let travelers come and hang out mm, with me cool. for a little while. I'd love to do an Airbnb thing as well, Ooh. with because I've heard people who will um, do Airbnb for their vans, and they'll like no longer live in the van, but they'll wow. have the van set up in the backyard, mm -hmm. and people will come and live That's in the van so cool. just to experience it. Yeah, or and couchsurfers. So, com. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so that kind of thing I think would be a lot of fun, and and eventually build a tiny house. That's like 10 years from now, though. That's, That's funny. Time. Buying land is like my biggest yeah. future goal, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saving money right now. If I stay in one spot, I can save almost $400 a month. Dang. Yeah. You so, go. That's great. But it's hard. It's really hard because I'm so ADHD. I'm like, I want to go there and I want to go mm -hmm. here and I want to visit this park and and oh my gosh, there's a mountain lion. Let's go in that direction, you know? Like, would, would you say that uh, <laughs> now that you've been doing this full time for a year, you do want to get a piece of land at some point. Do you mm -hmm. see yourself getting an apartment in between then, or you've done it so long in the van, or you that you're comfortable no. enough that it's, this is just how it's going to be until that land happens? I need to be outside because of my agoraphobia. Anytime I stay in a house or an apartment or something that's shut out from the outdoors, um, I get trapped there, and I just can't leave and it's terrifying to leave it's terrifying to stay and so i need to be outdoors even when i get land i'm not going to build a house on it i need yeah. something mobile and even with the tiny house it's going to be a very open plan with lots of windows very very windowy mm -hmm. so this lifestyle is very therapeutic for you oh yeah gods there's i would not be a functional person if i weren't living on the road and living like a homeless person <laughs> well, I'm glad you're doing better. Thank you. Tamara, what would you like to share as your final thought for everyone? Um, gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just gratitude for, um, gratitude to God and to, um, to the world and for the good things that come into my life and for all of the people that are a part of that and for all of the, um, specifically contributions that were made to me living um, this life spot, lifestyle in an exponentially more co comfortable and convenient and an organized and clean and full way um, by donating through the Amazon wish list, by donating through the uh, crowdfunding that you did, and uh, or by uh, participating with the labor and the design, and especially to you obviously for, um, for organizing the build of this. It still blows my mind. That, I mean, and, and with this event too, it still blows my mind that not only did yeah. you conceive of it, yeah. but that you, but Changed how did life. you know that people would do that? You know what I mean? Yeah. How did you know that people <laughs> would like, show up and contribute and that people would be excited about this thing that, that we were doing, you know? And how did you know that if you invited people out to the desert to help others, that they would show up and that it would be this life changing thing for people? Like, so, um, I just like... I mean, I think there's an agenda out there to make us feel like everything is bad and like that we're that we all hate each other. And I think the more people who are promoting the opposite of that, which is reality, um, that people are good, that people take care of each other, people look out for each other because life imitates art, you know. Yeah. And so the more people that can create that kind of media and promote and put that in the forefront and give examples and model that and show what it looks like, I feel like it just you helped me immensely by giving me a home, but every time someone does good and puts it out there, they're helping on such a larger scale yeah, to, to it mix in yeah, tumbles, yeah, some like good news every, with all the exactly. Every person, things. like you see somebody and you just are positive with that person, that changes that person's day right there. They could yeah. change somebody else's day, they could change somebody else's day, and just one little thing can But modeling generosity, the world. you know, like, I just feel like it has a really positive effect on a lar larger scale, too. So I really appreciate that, and I still just feel, you know, I've, I've been trying to find the words as I talk to people, because there is an, it's in, in a way uncomfortable to receive so much, you know what I mean? And 
it's the most comfortable. I lo I'm so comfortable here, but it's like almost like, but the word is humbling. That's what the yeah. word is. Tisha probably knows what I would say to that. Mm. No, tell You're me. welcome. <laughs> Yeah. Take it away. I've had a fascination with that song from Moana. I just sing it all the time. And You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Cammy, uh, what would you like to share as your uh, last thoughts with everyone here? It's been a year. <laughs> Folks are watching. Last thoughts. I just, yeah, I'm grateful too. And I'm grateful for everybody who contributed to my friend. And yeah, like it also actually benefits me too because we share a lot. And uh, her food's in my fridge. Yeah. <laughs> She keeps shopping for me too. Um, <laughs> and cooking for you. Yeah. It's only salad. Oh, that's the nicest thing. You have the space she to cook. Cooks for I'm me. so jelly. It's amazing. Space to cook. And my neighbors here have invited me to dinner the last two nights, which people who know me, I forget to eat a lot. So I just love people. People are so yeah. good. Um, also, just to anybody who's thinking about doing anything, there's no reason that you should ever Go have a back. dream that you're not working towards. Mm -hmm. yeah. The second you think of something you want to do, just go do it. <laughs> like, why Why would you not do something? I meet so many people who are like, I've always wanted to do that. It's like, and I'm it's like why don't you do it? Yeah. It's not impractical, just like, it's unrealistic, it's not for me, I couldn't do it. Fall. How do you know? Yeah. How do you know? Like, That's why are I you thought. following the script that somebody else laid out for you? Right. But yeah, I've heard that about traveling and living abroad and now van life too. Um, so I just want to say like, if not you, who? Like, right. why Why could why you not, not you? do it, you yeah. know? So if it's something that you want to do, go do it. Um, but there's going to be just some discomfort. And there's also a falling away of just, like, image. Because, yeah, sometimes when I get out of my bed, and sometimes, like, I'm in my pajamas, and suddenly I realize I have to go to the bathroom, so I, like, have to run into Safeway or Walmart or wherever I am, and or a public park or something like that. And I know I don't look great, you know, so sometimes be like, oh, she just got out of the van. There's going to be some of that. There's going to be some embarrassment, like at family functions sometimes. Like, I just went to my cousin's wedding, and I'm sure people are like, so you live in a van now. <laughs> but People are going to judge you. But part of it is yeah. just being but able right. to hold yourself up and, and just go, yeah, I do that. Um, and maybe it sounds weird to you, but I really like it. And if you're confident about it, it works out. And we're changing the stigma. Yeah, we're paving hopefully. the way for exactly. you. Exactly. So that's <laughs> why I like using the term homeless. A lot of people are like, no, I have a home. My van is my home. But I like using the term homeless simply because I want to change the way people think about homelessness. Yeah. I really think that's important. I, th I like the idea yeah. of changing the way that homeless people think about homelessness. I agree. To, mm. to I present agree. Um, a different way, you know, with a little bit of money and a little bit of effort, you could uh, be living a higher quality of living. And maybe yeah. that's naive of me to say, having never actually been in that situation. But I've met homeless people who are kind of just like, you can do that. Yeah. You know? Like, so. Homeless shouldn't mean desperate, you know, mm -hmm. or desolate is the word. Tisha? We haven't seen you for a year. A lot of folks yeah. since your interviews. What would be your final thoughts that you would like to share with everyone watching? I think I'm going to go with gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> the answer but is gratitude. <laughs> no, I, it really makes a difference. Everything that's happened in the last year has made a huge difference in my life. Um, I, I've been doing a little bit of the YouTube channel as well, you know, and there's just amazing people out there who are very kind and people will help me out with things even when I don't need help, you know, and they are amazing and there's a lot of uh, gratitude in there for uh, my followers and for just the people that I meet here at the Van Build. Every single person has so much to give and they come to give, but then there's also this element of accepting the receiving end of it and I don't think that anybody who comes to the van build ever leaves um, exactly as they were <laughs> they well, always get something out of it so. yeah let's go ahead and, and start with you and work backwards if folks want to follow up and chronicle your life and adventures how would they find you on the web oh um, so on YouTube, it's youtube.com forward slash Tisha, T-E-S-H-I-A, and that'll go to my YouTube channel. Um, I do have a Facebook, but I keep that more to people I've actually met in person. And so if you want to join my Facebook, come to the Van Build next year and meet me and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I'll add you on Facebook. So yeah. Cammie, are you doing anything online where people can follow you? <laughs> 
I just quit social media. I, I don't know, I just don't. Like, I kept it up when I was out of the country because I wanted my family to see how my life was. But yeah, I, I just lost interest in maybe social quit, media. Maybe taking a break, who knows? She always they won't back. let you quit. <laughs> it's always like deactivate. So I'll check in this. like once a month or something and then I just deactivate. Sometimes I forget to deactivate. Anyways, that's Facebook. Um, I do have this vision of all these YouTube videos. I have all these ideas and I'm always writing them down. <sighs> Finding the time to make them yeah. is a different matter. That's why I have so much respect for people who it's YouTube. Like, it's not oh. the making. Like I could sit there and do a video and just post that, but I love editing because it's more artistic. I guess. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot more fun to being able to talk about something and then at the same time show a video of that thing going on. You know. Yeah. So that's, well, I need yeah, to figure that's out. Like, dude, I need to figure out a way to document the thing without it actually taking away from the doing of the thing. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, okay. but oh, wait. Good. So I don't know my YouTube address, but I do think that I might start posting videos just to tell my own story. So if we could put that in the notes. Of yeah. The, in the notes of this video, go ahead and look. I I don't know yeah. the address. Can you email them to me? Your link. Yeah. Uh, is it the same link that I always have? If I go back uh, yeah. to the other Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put. Uh, uh, Cammy's. Uh, oh, we're doing, sorry, an we're doing an interview. Give us a oh, minute. thank you, Spirit. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. We'll put Cammy's YouTube. We'll put Tisha's YouTube link in the notes. We'll put Cammy's YouTube link in the notes. And I can't tell you how many people have contacted me and <laughs> said, asked, "What's going on with Tara? <laughs> Did she sell the bus and run off with the circus? What's going on? There's been no updates. We were gonna have updates. What's going on? Uh, I can well, see you in the circus. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is. The the hardest part of anything is the beginning, right? And I, I've been giving that advice all around saying, just jump in, just do it, you gotta start. And then yeah. you figure it out. I need to take my own advice, basically. It's just a little intimidating. I don't know how to edit. I have been documenting some things, but I feel like I, I you know, I, I'm critical of the content that I'm coming up with. Anyway, so I just need to start. But I do have my channel. It's Tamara Don Hyde right now. I'm gonna change it to Ramblin' Tam. And then on Twitter and Instagram, and also mm. my public figure page on Facebook is Ramblin' Tam. So feel free to follow me and bear with me, be patient. I promise I will start. I have some content and I will continue to make content Maybe. and I will actually start <laughs> uploading it at some point. Also Another stay thing. tuned oh. for Tamara's videos of the event because we have turned her loose with a camera again this year and there'll be content <laughs> Tam -tam. hitting the web <laughs> very soon this. with so her cheesy. touch. <laughs> Let's see, final thoughts. Okay, so, so the last thing I would like to ask is, will we see you all three again back next yeah. year? Yes. Yes, of course. It's a family well, reunion at this point, you know? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Tam and I go to these primitive skills gatherings, and there's like this reverence. Drezzy! No. Uh-uh. Come here. Good girl. Um, there's this reverence for people who've been going for like 30 years. They're like, he was here year five. <laughs> so I hope that in 30 years, it's we'll going to be, be like, this one. I was awesome. in the first one yeah. and I've been to everyone since, yes. maybe not everyone, but yeah. Like, and I also feel I'm like, coming back. not that I, again, and I, uh, not that I have so much to offer. I've been doing filming, which is the funnest job in town, going around and touring and interviewing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I do have this karmic debt to pay off. You know what I mean? <laughs> that I don't think I'll have paid off any time. So it, it, it does me good to be able to come and make some small contribution here. Thank you three for taking a moment and sitting down and catch us, catching us up with your lives. And we look forward to seeing more of you on my channel, more of you on your own channels, and we'll see you all three again next year. <laughs> Thanks for watching Thank us. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Thanks for all the positive from our last video. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah, yeah that that was doing it. so nice. <laughs> there you have it. See you guys. <laughs>